Welcome to a very bare bones crash course on how to play Pokemon VGC. I'm not going to go over all the crazy and minute details, but I'm hoping that this video gets you a basic understanding of these concepts here. I'm also going to have timestamps in this video so you can skip to whatever you need help with the most. I'll also have all the resources I used in this video linked in the description. VGC or Video Game Championships, though I guess here is more appropriate to call it the competition, is the online ranked battle format accessible through Poke Portal by selecting the battle stadium. In this single round double battle format, each player brings a team of 6 different Pokemon with different held items, choosing 4 of them to face off with. The winner is decided by the last Pokemon left standing, or in some cases, the last to faint. The strategy to this format largely comes from the 4 Pokemon you decide to bring to a battle. Since there's only one round, you can catch them off guard with a strategy they haven't seen before, or bring a really strong core. The key to making most any Pokemon viable are their base stats, nature, EVs, and IVs. All Pokemon have their own individual base stats that determine how high or low their stats will be. For example, King Gambit's speed will always be lower than Kilowattro's because Kilowattro's base speed stat is higher. Pokemon also come with a set nature that affects their stats in some way. In total, there are 20 natures that can change and alter your stats and 5 that don't provide any boosts or reductions. You can also use mints that are obtained from random drops, raids, and the chances supply to change your Pokemon's nature. When it comes to getting the most out of your Pokemon, you need to learn about EVs, or effort values. Each Pokemon has 510 EVs they can distribute to their base stats, which increase the value shown on their stat table. Each stat can be maxed out at 252 of these EVs, which is indicated by the sparkles around the stat itself. You can only ever have two of your stats maxed out due to there only being 510 to distribute, so it's important to consider how you allocate these values when making a Pokemon. IVs, or internal values, also help alter your Pokemon's base stats, and each can have a value of anywhere from 0 to 31. You'll be able to tell if your Pokemon has good or bad IVs by using the judge feature you unlock once you beat the game. So, now that we've covered the what, it's about time we went over the how. In order to start building a Pokemon, you must have a Pokemon undergo EV training, meaning that you're taking those 510 EVs and distributing them to your stats. This can be done at any level because gaining experience through just leveling up doesn't provide any EVs. They must be obtained through the methods I'm about to go over. Before that though, I'm going to take a quick second to remind you about abilities. Every Pokemon has an ability that helps it during battle, for the most part. And you can change a Pokemon's ability with an ability capsule or use an ability patch should you want the Pokemon's hidden ability. There are two main ways of EV training your Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. The first and more expensive way is to simply head to a Chansey Supply in Mesagosa, Lavincia, Montenevra, or Cascarafa, and buy all the medicine needed to properly distribute your Pokemon's EVs. Each of the six medicinal products provides 10 EVs in any stat they're prescribed for. The more cost effective method of EV training would be the battling wild Pokemon. This method has been the more traditional version of getting EVs on your Pokemon, but it takes a bit more time than just buying what you need. Though if you ask me, this method is better because getting money in this game kinda sucks. Luckily you can save a little time by heading to the Deli Bird Presents, which are conveniently located in the same cities as the Chansey Supply, and buy all six of the power items. Each power item provides an additional 8 EVs to your Pokemon stats after a battle regardless of what EVs the Pokemon you're battling has. For example, if you were to fight a Talonflame while holding the Power Bracer, you would not only gain the Speed EVs from that Talonflame, but you would also get 8 Attack EVs from the Power Bracer you have equipped. Every Pokemon you battle gives out different EVs that often coordinate with that Pokemon's highest stat. A Pokemon like Raiji, for example, will give you speed, while a Garganical will give you defense. You may also find feathers in Lake Casaroya that provide one singular EV for each stat they're allocated to. Terra Dens can also drop some of the medicinal items and feathers, so be sure to stop by a den every now and then and get some rewards. Another thing to note is that there are six EV reduction berries that can be found around the East Province area in case you want to reinvest your Pokemon's EVs. Each of these berries reduce your EVs by 10, so they work as an inverse to the vitamins. It's highly recommended that you increase your Pokemon's IVs too. The only way you can change IVs is by going to Montenevra and speaking to the man with the Obama Snow for hyper training. Make sure you absolutely want to increase your Pokemon's IVs because once you do, they can't be decreased again. Don't forget to give your Pokemon an item too. A berry or one of the battle items that's for sale at Deliver Presents are very useful and often game changing. I'll put some popular items on screen now to show off some effects they can have on your Pokemon. Of course, there's way more than just these few, but I just wanted to give you an idea of how strong held items are. Determining how to make your Pokemon greatly depends on the Pokemon itself. Let's take Iron Hands for example. It's currently Series 2 when I'm recording this, so there's a very high chance that you've seen this guy once or twice. Looking at its stats, Iron Hands is most proficient in HP, attack, and defense. It doesn't have much speed or special attack, and its special defense is about average. With that in mind, a good build that myself and some other Iron Hands users go for is max attack, max special defense, and 4 HP EVs with the item Assault Vest on. This build provides maximum survivability and damage output. You could also make it adamant to give it even more attack or careful to maximize its survivability. Not to make it sound like you wasted a bunch of time, but even all this preparation can still make your Pokemon just not enough to cinch out a victory. But that's where terrestrialization comes in. 
Terrestrializing can drastically change the game state and even provide a way for you to come out on top on a scenario where you'd otherwise lose. Choosing the right Terra type depends on what you want that Pokemon to do. Some typings like Grass and Dark also provide advantages like being immune to powder moves or being unaffected by status moves boosted by Prankster. Don't forget that every Pokemon has access to the move Terra Blast so you can even use it to give a Pokemon access to an offensive typing they don't get normally. If you're ever looking to change your Terra type then I formally apologize because the only way to do so is by gathering 50 Terra Shards of your preferred typing and head to Nadali's Treasury. You can make the gathering process a little bit easier by day skipping once you've done all the dens that pertain to the type you're looking for that day, but it's still going to be a lot of time. I know this is a lot to remember, and it is, but the best way to prepare for me personally is by checking Peakalytics to see what Pokemon are being used, what tear types they go for, common items, builds, and other details that you might want to know. There's nothing wrong with a little practice on Showdown too, but just be aware that you're going to run into a slightly different meta than you would on the actual game. Like I said, there's a ton more that I haven't really covered and a bunch more niches that exist in VGC, but I didn't want this video to be too absurdly long and overwhelm you with information. If you do have anything you want to add or maybe I messed up on something or you just want a little more clarification, the comments are right there. You can go ahead and leave one and we can discuss a little bit further there. I just want to give you guys a general idea of what VGC is and how you could probably get yourself started. If you found anything in here helpful, again, drop me a comment or even liking and subscribing would help a lot and I'd really appreciate it. For now, that's all I got. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time I make a video. Or when I stream, whichever one comes first. It's, it's going to be a stream.